I think we could almost start right about now. Welcome, everybody. Welcome to live stream number four of the No Sleep Podcast. I am David Cummings. I'm the host of the No Sleep Podcast. Genuine joy, thrilling privilege to be with you today. But of course, I'm not alone. And uh, it is a pleasure to have a large cast with us here, our largest cast ever. And we are going to begin, I usually introduce him last, but I'm going to begin by uh, welcoming our maestro, the man who's providing the music you hear behind me, below me, beneath me, (laughs) is uh, always a joy, thrilling privilege to have him on the show from Cincinnati, Ohio. Would you welcome the swoosh, Mr. Brandon Boone. Woo-hoo. Brandon, on board. Hey, there we go. Hey, everyone. Woo, there's Brandon. Play the theme song. <laughs> <laughs> he's, he's got that one, one finger. Do, did he? Yeah. Did he? <laughs> it's so complex. So, there we go. Brandon, how are you doing? I'm doing great. Good. Just hanging out in my basement. Staying healthy <laughs> in the basement. That's all we can do. That's what you have to do these days. Exactly. Wonderful. Joining us also uh, on the stream, her second appearance, coming to us all the way from near Amarillo, Texas, if my memory serves me, the one and the only, the delightful Sarah Thomas. Sarah Thomas joins us. Hey, there Hi. she is. Your memory serves you well, David. Wonderful. Wonderful. How are you doing, Sarah? I'm great. I have no idea what day it is. <laughs> I know. It's, it's just it's that's, it is. It is today. It is literally today. I'll take it. Yes, we just have to live in the moment because that's all we have. <laughs> so philosophical. <laughs> well, speaking of philosophy and Texas, how else could we describe the man joining us? Also, for the second time, the great Mr. Strings himself. Would you welcome from Dallas, Mr. Atticus Jackson? Yay! Hello, hello, There's Atticus Jackson. Woo. Wonderful. How are you doing? I'm good. It was cold the other day. It was really weird. Cold. Now, cold in Texas is probably, uh, what, 50? Oh, no. I mean, (laughs) (laughs) in my part, yeah. (laughs) And the panhandle, though. We had snow. They get cold, cold. Wow. Yeah. I had a blizzard yesterday morning. (sighs) You win. So, you win. <laughs> yes, that's, that's right. You can't. You can't out cold a Canadian. So, <laughs> but wonderful. Thank you, folks, for being here. Um, well, speaking of uh, out colding Canadians, our resident Canadian who is living in the state of New Jersey against his will, <laughs> we have the one and only Graham Rowitz. There's the man. Oh, <laughs> hello. <laughs> <laughs> I need a birth certificate to really prove that. <laughs> old man Graham. Sound yes. old, look young. Yes. I wish that for all of you. Someone noted that uh, everyone thought, or not everyone, this person thought Graham was an old, old man, even older than me. But uh, all right. he's a young, spry it's, man. That is what we call a backhanded compliment, and I will take it. <laughs> Indeed. How are you, Graham? I'm fine. I'm fine. I, uh, I Sarah said, what day is it? And... Um, uh, I've come to the conclusion that every day feels like Thursday. Now, this happens to be Thursday, but no matter what day I, uh, I'm on, I feel like it's Thursday. Hmm. So that's my little nugget of chaos for everyone. Right. <laughs> yeah, that's that's pretty true. That's pretty true. The days just blend together. Yeah. Hi, hi, beautiful people in chat. <laughs> beautiful people, indeed. Ah, well, speaking of beautiful people, also joining us for the second time. Uh, everyone here is the second time, uh, except our, our newcomer, who I will introduce last. But uh, we have joining us uh, from Los Angeles, the inimitable, the one and the only, Aaron Lillis. Aaron, there. Hello, my friends. Wonderful, Aaron I hope you can hear Lillis. me well. Yes, coming through it's loud. Closer. Perfect. I see. What's that? A little Kermit the doll, uh, Kermit the Frog doll you've got there. <laughs> yes, <laughs> just got a nice hat. <laughs> wonderful, wonderful. <laughs> and how are you, Erin? Oh, I'm great. You know, I really, really, really thought this was yesterday, so I was glad to have an extra day because I thought oh, yesterday yes. was Wednesday. It was Wednesday. What? Well, oh, that's no. how we're all feeling. Yes, I don't. Are you, know. are you sure? Are you sure? <laughs> yes, we we it's... had originally proposed uh, to do this yesterday, but. Uh, we're doing it today. I just really thought yesterday was Thursdays, but 
Ah, right. All right. I don't know. It all comes full circle. Time is a time is a flat circle. They tell me it's a lie. (laughs) So is the planet. Hey now. Uh, Don't don't lie. Do not. Do not. Do not contact me. (laughs) (laughs) Do not at me. Don't at me, bro. Yeah. All righty. Yeah, well, last, but certainly not least, our, uh, our first time participant who, who has been on the podcast for many, many years now, a man of uh, so many unique and gifted voices. Uh, we are thrilled that he is joining us all the way from Israel. Believe it or not, it's almost midnight. It's after midnight where he is. Would you welcome the one and the only Ellie Hirschman? Ellie, coming on board. Oh. Sorry, I drifted off there for a second. You guys all speak loud way across the ocean, you know, and on chat, type all in caps, please. Yes, 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 yes. Now, are you going to come on video so we can see your lovely face there, Ellie? Uh, I will do my best. Please don't. Um, So, Ellie is the only one who is not on a Thursday. Uh, That's right. Oh, my goodness, it is. Technically, it is Friday. Yeah. David, did you... Uh, maybe uh, when we were testing out whose you, feeds we were viewing, did you happen to manually change it on your end for Ellie as well? You know, it, it could be my issue. Uh, let me see here, Ellie. Um, it's a reflex. Head. People just automatically block my image. <laughs> ah, yes, I, it was my fault. My fault. It started in junior high. Da-da-da-da. There we go. Oh, Ellie. Hey. Hey. Oh, pretty people. Wonderful. So, Ellie, how are you doing? I am doing well. I'm making sure that the kids don't lick the railings anytime we have to go outside and uh, don't spread disease any farther than they have to. Right. So what, what, is, what are things in Israel like these days? Is it, is, are you guys locked down sort of like everybody is? Um, yeah, I would say it's, it's not, you know, it's hard to say lockdown because there's nobody standing outside the door. But, you know, hmm. there's, uh, there's strict r- r- uh, guidelines in place. Don't go more than 100 meters from your home unless you need to. Don't, uh, you know, that's, hmm. that's the strict suggestion. And uh, wear a mask when you go out. That sort of thing. Hmm. Mm-hmm. Interesting. So we're all in the same boat. Yeah, We're all on the same planet Earth here trying to survive. We got right? a lot of helicopters going by. Did anybody else? No. I saw one today. Mm. Hmm. They're, nope. they're just there to scare us. Oh, okay. They're just monitoring. Yeah. The snipers are just a formality. Yes. <laughs> Wonderful. Well, thanks you. Thank you, everybody, for joining us here on the stream, and for all you folks on uh, YouTube watching us now. We're over a hundred people. So this is great. We're going to get going. We're going to kick off the story. So should I go to the back, so to speak? Yeah, we're going to send Brandon <laughs> to the back of the stage where he usually resides. <laughs> and, uh, and everyone's going to uh, depart the stage and we'll come back when their uh, roles call for it. So tonight we are going to do a story, a script from... The Inner Sanctum, if you folks are not familiar with that, it's a radio show back in the 40s, um, maybe 30s and 40s, 40s and 50s, somewhere back there. But it was a very popular old time radio show and they did scary stories. And this is one of their classics called The Vengeful Corpse. This was first performed back in 1949. Oh boy, I was 10 years old at the time and it was such a (laughs) thrill to listen to this live. (laughs) But uh, yes, yeah, so we are going to kick this, sh- uh, this show off and, uh, <laughs> and I'm going to play your host for the evening. And of course, because it's old time radio, I have to get in that mode. So here we go, The Vengeful Corpse. And I'm now reading from the script. The script, strangely enough, is full of bad puns, things that I would never make in real life. So don't blame me. But please, please, friends, absolute silence. I want it so quiet you can hear a head, uh, I mean a pin drop, in a small hillside New England cemetery. A chill evening wind stirs the leafless trees with a complaining murmur. A blood-red moon probes through the branches with grotesque fingers touching the faded headstones with their eerie light. A frail, drawn-faced young woman sits on an old stone bench, listening acutely to the rustling of the branches as if to capture some word whisper of the dead's forgotten past. 
Sarah! Sarah? Sarah, where are you? Oh, Paul! Oh, I'm, I'm here, I'm over here. Sarah, I've been looking all over for you. What are you doing out here anyway? I, I was called out here, Paul. What? The wind. There was a voice on the wind, and it called me to come out here. That's just in your mind, darling. No voice called you. Yes, Paul, it did. I recognized the voice. You recognized it? Then whose voice was it? It was old and tired and sort of cracked, and, and yet I recognized it as my own voice. You heard your own voice? Yes, Paul. And it was strongest right here where I'm sitting now, among my family's graves. Hello there! <gasps> Hello! It's just Mr. Griffin, the caretaker. I asked him to help me look for you. Ah, well. So you found your wife all right, Mr. Seaton? Yes, I, uh, I found her all right, Mr. Griffin. I thought I saw Mrs. Seaton come to the graveyard here earlier. Didn't expect she'd still be... Boy! What's wrong? Oh, uh, it's... What's the matter, Mr. Griffin? It's just that I, I get a sort of funny feeling every time I pass this grave here. What do you mean? What are you talking about? Uh, that, that grave. That one there. The, the, the one right next to you. Why? What's the matter with it? Well, ain't you noticed? There's only one name on the headstone. The first name, Hester. That's strange. My family name is Randall. W wasn't this woman a Randall? Oh, you don't know the story. Uh, what story are you talking about? Uh -huh. uh, the kin who buried this Hester woman didn't think she deserved the family name, so they left it off the headstone. Why? Why didn't they give Hester her full name? Because they didn't want anybody to know who she was, I guess. You see, Hester was burned at the stake. Burned at the stake for witchcraft. Witchcraft? Yep, that's what they say. Uh, Mr. Griffin, my wife is an ill woman as it is. Let him go on, Paul. But Sarah... What else, Mr. Griffin? Uh, well, that's all, Mrs. Seaton. Except Hester claimed at the stake that they were burning an innocent woman. She could be heard shouting it as the flames licked around her. She threatened with her last breath to get even someday. How could she get even? I don't know, but according to the story I heard, Hester said that this here town owed her the years of her life that they took away. Well, look, this is completely ridiculous. It's only a legend. Mr. Griffin, tell me, how many years ago did all this happen? Well, it's, it's right here on the headstone, you see. Uh, Hester, lost soul, born October 3rd, 1759, died... Good heavens! What's wrong? Uh, look, Mrs. Seaton, well, the date of Hester's death, it's worn away! Sarah. Uh, yes, Paul? What are you doing out of bed? When did you get up? Uh, why, uh, just, just a minute ago, I, I can't sleep. She keeps calling me. <laughs> I hear her voice right here in this room just a few minutes ago. What? She was begging me to help her, telling me she never really lived and pleading with me to bring her back to life. Now, Sarah, you've got to calm down. I thought I saw her. Now, Sarah, believe me, there's no one. She was dressed in a black dress, and there was a large W on it. That's for which. And in her hand, she held a flaming torch. I'm going to call the doctor. Someone's at the door. All right, I'll, I'll see who it is. No, wait. Wait. I'll go. Ah, good evening, Mrs. Seaton. Why, Judge Foster? I hope I didn't awake you folks. I saw light in the window, so I... Oh, that's uh... all right, Judge. Come on in. 
Oh, well, thank you. I am sorry to bother you this time of night, Mr. Seaton, but I was looking out my window on the other side of the cemetery, and I thought I saw something, or, or someone, prowling around out there, and I wondered if they came over this way. Who was it? Well, I, I don't know. Someone carrying a torch. A, a torch? Go on, Judge. Well, of course, it could be that my eyes were playing tricks on me. <laughs> They're not so good. But as far as I could make out, it was a woman dressed in black. Paul! You saw this woman, Judge? You're sure? Oh, yes, yes. Well, I, I'm pretty sure I saw her. Of course, it is kind of dark out there, but it looked to me like there was something on the front of her dress. What, what do you mean? Well, there, there was a large letter, a W, a big white letter W on it. Esther. It was Hester. Just as I no. told you. No, Sarah. Uh, Hester? Who's Hester? Hester Randall. That's who you saw. She was in this house. No, it must be a trick. You, you see, someone is trying to frighten you to make you worse. Now, now, now hold on, folks. Hester Randall was buried over 100 years ago. She's come back to life. Oh, Mrs. Seaton, I, I Now, I Judge, my, my wife is ill. She doesn't realize what she's saying. I know Hester's alive. You didn't believe me, Paul, but Judge Foster saw her too. Oh, well, I didn't see anyone who's been dead over 100 years. I mean, oh, good heavens. What is it, Judge? Don't, don't you smell it? Yes. Some, something burning. It's, it's the odor of burning flesh. Look, out there on the back lawns, stuck in the earth, a torch, a flaming torch. I tell you, it's useless to have me dig up this grave. I've got to know, Paul. It's the only way I'll be sure. Uh, careful, Mr. Seaton. You're just about deep enough for the coffin now, if it's still there. Judge, I don't know how you can sanction a thing like this. Well, M Mr. Seaton, you see, I want to be sure, too. But it's ridiculous. Ah, you've struck wood with the shovel. Yes, yes, it's the coffin, all right. You'd better go easy now. That wood is soft with age and, and half rotted away. Okay. I think we can open it now. No, uh, wait. I'll give you a hand with the lid. There's something inside it. A body charred it's a body all right oh, only it isn't a woman's you can still make out the face <gasps> it's griffin the caretaker dr norton i'm so glad you've gotten here i came as soon as i could mr seaton what's wrong she's worse doctor oh much worse She's been in her room all day, hiding like a frightened child. I, I, I think the reading makes it worst. Reading? What reading? Well, for the past few days, she's been reading books about her family history. Why did you let her have them? Well, because at first they seemed to quiet her. Since the night we found Mr. Griffin's body in that grave, she's wanted to know more and more about Hester Randall. Paul? Oh, Sarah, uh, Dr. Norton's here, dear. You've got to warn her, Paul. It's before it's too late. Warn, warn whom? Uh, warn who? Mrs. Seaton? Judge Foster. He's in danger. Hester will kill him next. What? What? It's in the records of the court. The magistrate who sentenced Hester to death in this state was a man named Foster. 
Now, now, Mrs. Seaton, you're just please, upset. Please, believe me, Judge Foster is a direct descendant of that magistrate. Sarah, Sarah, Hester's dead, dear. The dead can do no harm. Paul, Paul, <laughs> you don't understand. She's killed one man already, and now she's going to kill another. She swore she'd get that revenge on the magistrate and on the man who was her accuser. Mrs. Seaton... All this took place over a hundred years ago. Then what about Mr. Griffin? W what do you mean, Sarah? He had the same name, too. According to the record, Hester's accuser was a man named Richard Griffin. Judge Foster, my wife insisted that I come over here and warn you about uh, Hester. Oh, well, thank you, Mr. Seaton, for troubling, but I'm not a bit worried about the similarities of names. Well, I... I didn't admit it to Sarah, but the coincidence with Griffin was strange. Oh, the, the, the dead never frightened me, Mr. Seaton, but thank you for coming over. Oh, by the way, can I drive you home? No, no, thanks. Dr. Norton is waiting for me outside. Good night. Good night, Mr. Seaton. <sighs> now, where did I put those glasses of mine? Oh, I'm sure I left them on the table here somewhere. Say, who, who opened that door? Is that you coming back, Mr. Seaton? Oh, well, confound it. Whoever it is, answer me. Who's out there? <laughs> It's just me, you prosperous, just duke. What? Who, who are you? Your conscience has been dimmed by the evil of your acts. Who am I? Mark you well this torch I light. Now mark you also my garb. This black garment I wear and upon which you have impressed the wicked W. <gasps> Hester! I, Satan's magistrate, Hester Randall! That Hester character. <laughs> you know, that's the way a dame gets when she's burned up. <laughs> Makes a specter of herself. You know, I kind of feel sorry for the old Judge Foster. When Hester showed up, well, the poor guy didn't know which way to turn. <laughs> they should have believed Sarah Seaton. She sure had Hester dead, or rather, alive to rights. Hmm, yes, indeed. It's a wise descendant who knows her own forebearers, particularly the grave-minded ones. <laughs> oh, well, now, let's get back to our flaming fable and see what's cooking. Paul! Paul, wake up! Oh, uh, hmm. Oh, please, wake up! Oh, oh Sarah, uh, what's the matter, darling? I just had a terrible dream. I'm afraid. Oh, no, easy, dear. I dreamt that Judge Foster was killed tonight by Hester! You did warn Judge Foster, didn't you, Paul? Yes, of, yes, of course, Sarah. Where are you going, dear? I'm getting dressed. I'm going down to tell the judge myself. You're staying here. Paul, please let me go. It means a man's life. You heard what Dr. Norton said. Under no circumstances are you to leave this house. You're to talk to no one. Why am I being kept here like a prisoner? Why don't you let me speak to the judge? <gasps> What was that? It sounded like a, a door banging in the wind. Yes, yeah, see, there it was again. Did you lock that back door? Uh huh. I, I'm sure I did. I, I better see what happened. Wait, I'm going with you. I, I better turn on a light here in the kitchen. No, you won't have to. I can see. It's the door, all right. I, I guess I must have forgotten to spring the latch. Oh! Sarah, what's the matter? Out there. By the trees at the end of the lawn, I thought I saw a figure. All right. Just stay here, dear. I'll be right back. 
There's no one out here, Sarah. You're sure? Positive. It's probably just a shadow. Oh, oh there is someone right here. <gasps> Sarah? Sarah, what happened? Sarah, where are you? Sarah? She was standing here, Sheriff, right here at the back door when I heard her scream. And there wasn't a sign of her when you got back here to the door? Not a sign of her. Well, folks don't just vanish into thin air, Mr. Seaton. She must be around here someplace. I've got to find her before it's too late. Too late? What do you mean by that? I, 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 don't, I don't really... I oh, have a now you're not that... going to tell me about dead witches returning too, are you? Don't tell me you believe in that stuff. I, I don't know what to believe. Sheriff? Is that you, Sheriff? Yes. Who's there? Dr. Norton! <sighs> You'd better come with me, Sheriff. I, uh, just discovered something on the side of the road, about a mile away. Mr. Seaton, I, I think you'd better wait here. What is it, Dr. Norton? What have you found? I'd rather you wait, as I said before, until we're sure. What are you trying to hide from me? I guess you'd better speak up, Doctor. If it's something that concerns Mr. Seaton, maybe he should know. All right, Sheriff. When I made the turn into the road, my headlights caught in a ditch. I wasn't sure at first, so I stopped the car and got out. It was a body in the ditch. A charred body. This way, Sheriff! Over here, to the right! Oh, where is she? Easy now, Mr. Seaton. Right here, Sheriff. Wait until I switch on the flashlight. There. Is it... Is it Sarah? Just a moment, Mr. Seaton. Dr. Norton has made a mistake. What? This corpse isn't your wife. I can tell by that ring. It's the ring that Judge Foster always wore. Hello? Oh, yes, Sheriff. Any news yet? Well, why can't your men find her? It's been six hours already. No, I haven't heard a word. Yes, please call me as soon as you hear anything, will you? Okay, thanks. Who's there? Who is it? Paul, open the door. Sarah! Yes, yes, quick, let me in. Oh, Sarah. Sarah, thank the Lord you're all right. Oh, Paul. Darling, where have you been? What happened to you? Wait, lock the door quickly. She doesn't know I've come back. She's still looking for me. Who? Hester! She was out there, Paul. That's why I ran from the house. She's called to me from the road. Made me go with her. I, go where? To the cemetery. She kept me there, torturing me, begging me to change places with her. Darling, you're not making any sense. Please, 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 please believe me. We've got to get away from here tonight, right now. She'll kill me if we don't. She wants my life for the one she never lived. Oh, stop it! Stop! Now get a hold of yourself! Because there's no such woman as Hester Randall. But I saw her. I talked to her. The woman you saw is somebody else. Somebody living who wants you to believe that she's Hester. She wants everybody to believe it. But why, Paul? Why? Because she's a cold-blooded murderess. She's killed two people already, and she's trying to drive you out of your mind completely. But then who? Who could it be? I wasn't sure before. Now, I'm almost positive. It's Dr. Norton. Dr. Norton? You saw this Hester, Sarah. What was she like? Uh, like a ghost. 
like a shadow in the light. You can see her face and get, you can see through it, beyond. No, no, that, that was just an illusion created by the night, dear, and, and perhaps some other tricks of a clever, scheming woman. You'll see. I'll prove that's Dr. Norton. <gasps> it's the back door again. It, it's blown open again. Leave it. We've got to get out of here. No, no, stay here. I'm going to see who opened that door. <laughs> Please hurry. Don't leave me alone for long. Paul! What is it, Sarah? Don't come in here. Don't come back. Run away as fast as you can. What's the matter? She don't come in here. She's here, Hester. Sarah! Look out. I've got the gun out of the desk. I'm going to kill her. Sarah! Sarah, are you all right? I've, I've killed her, Paul. She won't torture me anymore. I've killed Hester. She came toward me and I fired. Sarah, there's no one in this room, dear. Over there in the hall, she's there. Where? I don't see... Good Lord. You've broken the mirror. What? You shot it yourself. No, no, it can't be. I, I, I can't be her. And yet I, I saw her face. And it was my face too. Sarah, it was you. You all the time. I am Esther, fair gentlemen. It is warming to have such a friend as you to stand beside me in this mockery of justice. Oh, Sarah, Sarah. Run, run as fast as you can, Paul. I was wrong. I haven't killed her. Run! Sarah, I've got to help you. I've got to explain to you that... Thou art not Sarah. Not anymore. Can't you see who I am? Can't you see who has taken my place? Sarah, listen to me. I love you. Please, please come back to me. Sarah's gone. Now I can live the years they took from me. Sarah! See in my hand this pistol? We will bid it, I say. It will come with me. Still no answer, Sheriff? <sighs> no answer, Dr. Norton. I can't understand it. Mr. Seaton was home when I called just 15 minutes ago. I warned you, Sheriff, to have that house closely watched. Well, I can't do a hundred things at once. I've got every available deputy out looking for Mr. Seaton. Don't you realize she may have gone back to their house? Don't you realize that she is the one that might be Hester? Mrs. Seaton? Hester? What the deuce are you talking about? I'm talking about dual personality. Mrs. Seaton is suffering from a nervous breakdown, and it's entirely possible that she's the one who killed Griffin and Judge Foster. Why, you should have told me this before, Doctor. Come on, we're getting right over to the Seton house. Here, Paul. They buried Hester's body here. Dishonored and unnamed. But, Paul, you believe in my innocence? Yes, sir. We'd better go back, dear. Back? Just to the house. It's very cold here. It's cold everywhere, Paul. I feel the chill of death coming near me. You and I are going back. Back through time to an age where no one can harm us. This torch I hold, it will free us forever. Now, now, now wait, Sarah, please, listen. Now try to understand, dear. Ease your mind. The flames will be of no pain. I know, because I've been through such a death before. No, now, Sarah, wait! Oh! Oh, Paul! Esther's going. Oh, Sarah. Mr. Seaton! Are you all right? Yes. Looks like we got here just in time. Paul! She's going from me. Forever. Ugh. Oh, Sarah. She's dead, Mr. Seaton. I'm sorry, Mr. Seaton. 
Sheriff. What is it? What's the matter? Look. At the headstone. I didn't notice that before. It's been recut. Well, what do you mean? Don't you see what it says? Hester Randall, a lost soul, born October 13th, 1979, died April 16th, 2020. Say, have you had your personality split lately? Hmm? You see what happens when a dame gets her dates mixed up? Hmm. Oh, poor Hester. She didn't know whether she was coming or going to the grave. Hmm. Now, if you should be in an old New England cemetery some night and one of the headstones should move, don't be frightened. It's probably just Hester coming out for a hot date again. <laughs> Oh, by the way, there's no partying, uh, no, no parting moral attached to tonight's tale. I'll just leave you with your own thoughts. Hmm. As horrible as I hope they are. <laughs> well, it's time to close that creaking door for another seven day rest until the next time, at this uh, next week at this time, when we bring you another no sleep live stream. So until then, pleasant dreams. Mm -hmm. The end. Woo! Woo oh yeah. We did it. Brava. Brava. There we, we go. The we did it. And everyone comes back on stage for a curtain call. <laughs> we live. No yeah. one died. <laughs> no no one, one died except no voice actors were harmed in the production of this episode. No one actually died, indeed. Well, hey, thanks, everybody. That turned out well. We were trying some new stuff tonight with our coming on and off screen, and uh, I think it worked well. Well done, everybody. Yeah. And even you. Brandon's back on the screen there. Well done, Brandon. Hello. Hi, buddy. Hey. You guys were great. Uh, you, you were great, great buddy. I think we all feel a little bit like Sarah these days, right? <laughs> Are we all? Yes. Sarah, oh, Hester. Well, Sarah, well, Hester. Sarah Hester. Great. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Not you, Sarah Thomas. <laughs> Sarah Hester, I got our, it. I'm tracking now. I'm tracking. Our, the protagonist, Sarah, who's feeling a little split. <laughs> Indeed. Little what happens Sarah when you Thomas. call a woman inferior? A dame. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, and call she's her not a dame. well. She's not yes. well. <laughs> Indeed. You're just upset. It was my time of the month. I was at the vapors. Ah, <laughs> oh, yes. The monthlies. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> Darn it, I left my smelling salts. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Well, wonderful. Well, we're still, we've got 119 people still with us. Thank you. We're Ooh. seeing lots of applause and clapping on the, on Thank the comments. Thank you for the roses, the claps. You too. Oh. Yes, a great comment. It says, oh, Brandon, does your back hurt from holding up the team? Oh, oh, yes. <laughs> in a good way, right? Not holding up as in holding back, right? You, we couldn't have done it without your music behind us, I think is what they're oh. trying to say. Mm -hmm. I paid him for that. <laughs> <laughs> Spooky banjos. <laughs> Well, this has been a ton of fun. Thank you again, folks. And thanks everyone for watching. And if you're watching this after on the, uh, on the replay or on the YouTube channel, as it were, we hope you've enjoyed it. And uh, hey, why not subscribe and um, follow us on social media. We're at No Sleep Podcast pretty much everywhere you can find us. So you can keep up to date with when our next live stream is. Probably do it next week sometime as soon as we can all gather together again around the old radio. The virtual no. campfire. You're not going to say smash that like this time? Uh, <laughs> you got to <laughs> smash that like. Hit that subscribe. Hit that uh, whatever. Don't forget to ring the bell. Ring the bell. Ring that notification bell. Indeed. Hey! <laughs> Indeed. Well, I'll, on my screen, I'll go talk. Actually, uh, yeah, on the screen, they all get mixed up. But uh, Graham, any parting words? Yeah, I want to say happy birthday to Robert Daniel. I don't know if he's in our chat room, but he uh, said this lined up with his birthday. So I figure nice. I could do a little bit of that. Happy birthday, Robert. Happy birthday. 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 Happ
Don't blow out the candles because that'll uh, just spit all over the yeah, cake. That's, you know, the cloud of the viral cloud. Mm, it is true. <laughs> Very nice. Well, thank you, Grim, for remembering Robert like that. Aaron, any last words, so to speak? <laughs> uh, so many last words over and over again <laughs> every week. No, uh, yeah, I see a lot of familiar names in the chat. I'm peeking there now. Thanks, everybody, for supporting us and coming back. And hi, Lauren. And hi, uh, Desiree and Justin and everyone that we talk to and all the Calling Darkness and Gray, Gray Rooms people and everyone that comes back for more. And be one of the regulars so I can recognize your name. <laughs> yeah, that's the way to do it. And Sarah, the sane Sarah. <laughs> <laughs> Dr. Norton. Uh, Dr. Norton. Uh, Stay safe, stay sane. May all your Thursdays, as Graham said earlier, every day is Thursday now, <laughs> be merry and bright and full of no sleep. Ah, very good, very good. Wise words from the doctor, indeed. <laughs> and Atticus, how about you? Any last words? Uh, I'd just like to thank everyone for tuning in. Um, always love the support and love seeing all your pretty little faces. Thank you all for doing such a wonderful job acting. I very much look up to all of you. So it's always a pleasure to, uh, to work with y'all. So. Mm, well, thank you. And uh, for those who don't know, the, the little graphics that you see on our YouTube channel that uh, highlight each, uh, each stream, uh, Atticus makes those. So yeah. he's a, a graphics whiz. So thank you for doing that. That reminds me, Ellie, if you could just back up a little so I can get your whole head in frame, <laughs> I can, get, I can uh -huh. cut you out real nice. <laughs> Man, that's getting better. Yeah, everybody, everybody, take your uh, your Atticus uh, screen cap pose now. While you can. Yeah, that's, everyone make the face. <laughs> there we go. I gave you one there. That was beautiful. Oh, my eyelid, my eyelid is twitching now. <laughs> I shouldn't have made that face. It's okay, it'll be still. Link it all during the cast. I will take that out. <laughs> you will just be. He'll just like put an eye patch over it. Ooh. Yeah. Yeah. It'd look great look. with an eye patch. And and Ellie, what about you? Any last words before we let you go? Close to one o'clock in the morning, your time. Oh my word! <laughs> yeah, I don't. I don't feel it. I'm really jazzed to have been part of this, and I, I appreciate that you guys could uh, could bring me in. You know, uh, the global uh, community that we've that we've knit here. Um, I yeah. just love being a part of it. So thanks, all you guys. Awesome. Thanks for coming. Yeah, great to have you. That's amazing. All That's the way from fun. Israel. And there's like very little delay. It's, I tell you, the internet and the, the things you kids use these days, they're amazing. amazing. What the hell is an internet? <laughs> the internet, it's going to get big, let me tell you. Yeah, it's good. It's good <laughs> they're going to put us on a web or something. <laughs> series cloud. Of tubes. We're all in the cloud right now. The internet is a series <laughs> of tubes. Right, yeah. <laughs> and last but not least, the maestro. Any last words from Brandon Boone? Oh, you know, just thank you all for being here. And remember, no matter what day of the week it is, it's still today, so do with it what you will. Carpe today. Yeah, yeah. carpe today. That's those are wise <laughs> words. I wise. didn't think of them. <laughs> somebody else, <laughs> and I just pretend they're mine. <laughs> oh, David, did yes, you want to plug that um thing we're doing? Oh yeah, I, I I could I could plug that too. I, I'm going to mention it on this week's episode. Here, yeah. But oh uh, right right. Yeah, next weekend, uh, there is an event happening called Potapalooza. And what that is, it's basically, it's kind of like live aid, like a live uh, festival of, of music, although it's not music, it's podcasts. And so what happens is uh, we're raising money, not, not just us, but the whole Potapalooza thing is to raise money for the nonprofit Give Directly. And all the money raised will go towards those who most need cash, uh, suffering from the COVID-19 crisis. And so basically you can donate as little as $1, $5, $10, whatever you can give, and you will get access to an RSS feed, like a podcast feed. And then regularly throughout next weekend, episodes from various different podcasts will drop, including the No Sleep podcast, shows like LeVar Burton Reads, and there's a whole ton of others um, out there. So uh, it's very cool. It's a very cool kind of thing. And we hope there is a lot of money to help folks who need it. Uh, so uh, I believe it's plza.org. That's sort of short for Potapalooza, P-L-Z or Z-A.org. If you go there, you can learn all about it and see how it's going to work. 
But uh, yeah, thanks uh, Atticus for reminding me. And uh, you'll hear more about that on this week's episode as well. So plza.org, check it out. We're going to be on there. It's going to be a lot of fun. So a good reminder for next weekend, not this coming weekend, 24th, 25th, that kind of thing. So there you go. All righty. Well, thanks, folks. Thanks, everyone, for joining on the stream and for watching at home. And uh, we'll be back hopefully next week with another story. And uh, until then, you got to just stay sleepless, brace yourself and all that fun stuff. And so we bid you a good night. Adieu.